Hello everyone and in today in today's video we are going to talk about how to design a USB to SPI converter uh, and we're going to use the microchip MCP2210. So just as our previous videos where we had designed a USB to I2C or a USB to UART we're also going to design a USB to SPI converter. It's one of those embedded communication protocols that uh, almost every microcontroller or processor would have and some peripheral components too, especially if they're doing, uh, if they work only digitally, you would want to, you would want to use these protocols to communicate with them. So the MCP2210 is the chip that we're going to select. Um, and let's download the data sheet to have a look at what we're trying to design over here. So the chip has the SPI output and it has eight GPIO general purpose input output pins. It will give you how the, yeah, and this is all the information on how we need to communicate with the chip. Uh, we'll be making it work in part two of this video, but in part one, we'll be designing the breakout board. To get an idea of how to design the breakout board, Microchip has few development projects where they share the schematic and and you can use this as a reference design to design your own schematic. So let's get started. And I've already designed the schematic over here and we'll have a look at what the, it's a very simple breakout board and a lot of the sophistication would come in the software side of things where you have to write certain codes in order for you to generate the SPI signal, which uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing it at a, later, at a later video or a different video, which is part two of this. So to break down how the schematic works, this is the MCP2210 from Microchip. It has uh, eight GPI opens. This, has, this is the USB input. This is the SPI s protocol. Then there's reset, I believe, um, let's have a look. I might have missed something. So one thing that I generally do is, uh, if you want to double sh troubleshoot your design, you could go to the schematic section over here. And the board that they have designed is very similar to what we want. Uh, and in the reset button, they have they have a 390 ohm resistor. Now this seems a little low value. Uh, and then they have a one microfarad coupling decoupling capacitor. All right, so what do we have over here? So we do have the 100 nanometer decoupling capacitor uh, and the reset pin needs to have a pull up resistor. And the VDD pin also has the 100 uh, nanometer decoupling capacitor. All right, so there is a pull up resistor that I would need to add. It says 390 ohms. Uh, sometimes when we see things like this and you're not sure whether you're seeing the information right, you might want to look at the bill of material and we'll have a look at the bill of material if they have it. That's the bomb. And what was this pin number? So this was R1, R1, uh, R1 is, okay, here's the bill of material. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. All right, uh, R1. R1 is a 390 ohm resistor from Panasonic. So what we'll do is let's uh, download the schematic. It's from Panasonic. Now if it is out of stock, we can always find a replacement or a component that is similar. So it says zero out of stock. If you want, yeah, there's another one over here. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and install this library. All right, so we have our 390 ohm 
pull up register out here which is based on the schematic or the reference design and yeah so if whenever in doubt there's always a schematic that you could reference and you can also communicate with the manufacturer through the support forums and ask them to review your design which uh, I will show you in one of the videos where I had a design that I needed some clarification and then they gave some pretty pretty sound recommendations all right so the rest is all header um, we don't need to have the circuitry or rather I don't I don't feel the need so this is how it's going to be powered it's going to be powered directly from the USB the USB when you plug it into your laptop or computer you're going to plug into the device it's going to power this particular component and we have a reset pin an oscillator an external oscillator a couple of decoupling capacitors and literally everything else is just directly connected to the headers so we have two different headers one is the GPIO headers which is the general purpose of headers and then this is the SPI we have VDD 3.3 volts and ground so this is how the schematic looks like how does the PCB look let's uh, have a look so the goal is to take this and plug it directly into your computer and then you can use this to communicate with the components that require or that need that com that would communicate using SPI. So the goal is to make it very convenient in order to communicate with uh, embedded systems components uh, digitally using the SPI interface. All right, so this is how it's going to look, and this is how the design is. It's a two-layer PCB. You don't want to make it any make it more complicated than it should be. Uh, two headers on the side and the wires are literally connected to each other there's just one polygon that's the ground polygon which is on the bottom layer so that's the reference plane or the return path and the rest is uh, yeah just pretty much just taking a wire and connecting it to the right component and the right pad or the, or the right net and that's about it so in part two we will design we will fabricate the board we'll solder it and then we start testing to see if it all works. All right. And until next time, thank you.